Anthropic and the White House have both dropped their plans for building AI in America. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, I was going to do the main episode all about this new Anthropic report about building AI in America. That report, as we'll talk about, gets into energy concerns, geopolitical competition, and is a really interesting document that has even more interesting context based on some leaked memos of Anthropics earlier in the week. But today, as I was preparing to record, the White House dropped their own 28-page report on America's AI action plan. Which, of course, is no coincidence. It's clear that Anthropic was timing their report alongside this. But what it sums up as is an interesting set of documents that show how both the U.S. government and the big labs are thinking about the key geostrategic challenges and just in general, the infrastructure challenges that face the AI industry as it moves to the next levels. There is a lot of commonality despite different sources, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. And let's actually start with the Anthropic Report. Here's the nut of it. For the United States to lead the world in AI, they write, we must make substantial investments in computing power and electricity that make it possible to build AI in America. As technology evolves, the required resources, infrastructure, and regulatory conditions need to change too. Now, right from the beginning, what you get here is that when they say build AI in America, they are not using the word build metaphorically. They are talking about literally the physical infrastructure required to produce AI here. Right at the top of the list, their first focus is the energy requirements for global AI leadership. Anthropic's big point here is not only that new energy generation in the U.S. is lagging, it is getting absolutely smoked by China. While the U.S. is lagging in bringing energy generation online, China is rapidly building energy infrastructure for AI, having added over 400 gigawatts of power capacity last year compared to the just several dozen gigawatts added in the U.S. Now, a question that might come up, since neither I nor most of you are energy experts, is what sort of power are we actually talking about? Obviously, 400 versus several dozen makes clear the gap, but what are the requirements going to be? Well, Anthropic says that they project they're going to need 2 gigawatt and 5 gigawatt data centers to develop a single advanced model for just themselves in 27 and 28. They expect that by 2028 in total, the Frontier AI labs are going to require 20 to 25 gigawatts just for training demands. The comparison they use is New York City's peak electricity demand, with this being twice that. What's more, they say that that's just for training, and at least as much will be needed for inference. In other words, the compute that's used while people are actually using these models. In total, then, the US AI sector is going to need at least 50 gigawatts of electric capacity by 2028. Josh Kelly writes, That's about one Netherlands, Sweden, Argentina, or Taiwan. Anthropic, on its own, will need a New Zealand. Now, it's not so much that America doesn't have the power to keep pace or the ability to bring more power online. It's that China is spinning up new power supply at such a rapid pace that they're completely unconstrained. They can spin up new industrial plants, AI, and domestic electrification all at the same time without taxing supply. The U.S. at this point isn't really close to AI-induced brownouts, but at the pace we're on, it's starting to become a possibility. Anthropic are therefore calling for an all-of-the-above approach to adding more power generation. Rather than focusing on just green tech or just natural gas or just nuclear, Anthropic wants to see everything expand much faster. Now, they do note that AI is the perfect catalyst for pushing emerging energy technology like geothermal and advanced small nuclear, but they really want all of it. Anthropic also calls for, in this report, streamlined permitting to help data centers be built fast. They have a long section about the challenges of building energy in the U.S., including the six main types of pre-construction permits, transmission approvals, and more. In their report, Anthropic proposes two big pillars of American AI infrastructure. The first is to build large-scale AI training infrastructure. For that, they want to see federal lands be made available as options for AI infrastructure construction to avoid the years-long process of state and local zoning. They also want to see public-private partnerships for things like expedited power line build-outs. Their proposed pillar, too, is building broad-based infrastructure for AI innovation nationwide. And this is a very comprehensive, all-inclusive pillar. This includes the acceleration of geothermal, natural gas, and nuclear permitting, a strengthening of domestic production of critical grid components, such as through loan and loan guarantee programs, as well as supporting training and apprenticeship programs for critical energy workers, electricians, and construction workers. So really, this report is all about the infrastructure required to build AI in America. But then, as I mentioned, we got from the White House its own AI action plan. Former VC Shriram Krishnan wrote, Today is a day we have been working towards for six months. We are announcing America's AI action plan, putting us on the road to continued AI dominance. The three core themes, accelerate AI innovation, build American AI infrastructure, 
lead in international AI diplomacy and security. The introduction of the report, which you can find at ai.gov slash action dash plan, is America is in a race to achieve global dominance in artificial intelligence. Winning this race will usher in a new era of human flourishing, economic competitiveness, and national security for the American people. Recognizing this, President Trump directed the creation of an AI action plan in the early days of his second term in office. Based on the three pillars of accelerating innovation, building AI infrastructure, and leading in international diplomacy and security, this action plan is America's roadmap to win the race. Now, the actual document itself, like I said, is about 28 pages. And while it's comprehensive, it's not particularly detailed, so there will be a lot to do and figure out in the months to come. To get a sense, though, of the types of things that they're thinking about, let's go through these pillars one by one. Pillar one is accelerating AI innovation. The overview writes, America must have the most powerful AI systems in the world, but we must also lead the world in creative and transformative application of those systems. Ultimately, it is the uses of technology that create economic growth, new jobs, and scientific advancements. America must invent and embrace productivity-enhancing AI uses that the world wants to emulate. Achieving this requires the federal government to create the conditions where private sector-led innovation can flourish. So what are the pieces of this? Basically, the advanced overview page has all of the bullet points, while the full report has more like a paragraph on each of them. Some of these are exactly what you'd expect, like removing red tape and onerous regulation, but a lot of them are getting into real details. One which Krishnan pointed out as something that was particularly important to him was encourage open source and open weight AI. On that front, the report reads, open source and open weight AI models are made freely available by developers for anyone in the world to download and modify. Models distributed this way have unique value for innovation because startups can use them flexibly without being dependent on a closed model provider. They also benefit commercial and government adoption of AI because many businesses and governments have sensitive data that they cannot send to closed model vendors. And they are essential for academic research, which often relies on access to the weights and training data of a model to perform scientifically rigorous experiments. We need to ensure America has leading open models founded on American values. Open source and open weight models could become global standards in some areas of business, and in academic research worldwide. For that reason, they have geostrategic value. While the decision of whether or how to release an open or closed model is fundamentally up to the developer, the federal government should create a supportive environment for open models. Then, as with each of these policy points, they have a set of recommended policy actions. In this case, those include ensuring access to large-scale computing power for startups and academics, partnering with leading technology companies to increase the research community's access to private sector computing, and a number of others that get even more nitty-gritty. Now, this is particularly notable because one could make an argument that this sort of runs counter to the way some of the previous policy had been oriented when it comes to China. We've continued to see more and more reductions and more and more prohibitions when it comes to things like chip exports to China. And for a while, that was aligned with the point of view that you shouldn't have open source models because China can just emulate it. Now, part of what's happened, of course, is that China has raced into the lead when it comes to open models. DeepSeek at the beginning of this year was, of course, a major wake-up call. And one of the really interesting conversations is basically whether the U.S. doesn't make open models available. From a cost and availability standpoint, the world will just default to Chinese models with all the attendant prohibitions that they might have around the way that history is told. Point being that the acknowledgement that open source and open weight models have geostrategic value is a big one that I think will be highly instructive to how this government thinks about AI diffusion in the years to come. Another one that I noticed which is a theme we've been harping on here, although this is obviously a slightly different version of it, is the call to build an AI evaluations ecosystem. Turns out it's not just developers who are thinking more about agent evals right now, it's also the U.S. government. Pillar 2 is sort of ripped from the pages of the Anthropic Report and is called Build American AI Infrastructure. They write, AI is the first digital service in modern life that challenges America to build vastly greater energy generation than we have today. American energy capacity has stagnated since the 1970s, while China has rapidly built out their grid. One needs only look at this chart to see just how dramatic that is. They continue, America's path to AI dominance depends on changing this troubling trend. That requires streamlining permitting, strengthening and growing the electric grid, and creating the workforce to build it all. So this is very similar to what Anthropic is calling for. Streamlined permitting, developing a grid that can match the pace of AI innovation, This particular report goes farther in talking about restoring the American semiconductor manufacturing industry, or reshoring it, and it also talks about training a skilled workforce for AI infrastructure. The third pillar is to lead in international AI diplomacy and security. They write, To succeed in the global AI competition, America must do more than promote AI within its own borders. The United States must also drive adoption of American AI systems, computing hardware, and standards throughout the world. America currently is the global leader on data center construction, computing hardware performance, and models. 
it is imperative that the United States leverage this advantage into an enduring global alliance while preventing our adversaries from free riding on our innovation and investment. Now, it is way beyond the scope of this show, obviously, which is an AI show, to get into American foreign policy in general. But one of the great tensions for American foreign policy, particularly in this White House, is trying to navigate the line between this sort of America first withdrawal from the world and America first style leadership of the world. This is, I believe, a central tension. And I say that without getting into any of the arguments for one side or another. What's clear, though, is that at least when it comes to AI, this is not a U.S. government in withdrawal from its leadership role in the world. Instead, this document articulates a vision of intentional American engagement to diffuse American AI throughout the world. The first pillar here is exporting American AI to allies and partners. And to some extent, going back to that question that we had before when we were talking about the open source and open weight models, the policy that seems to be coming together is deny China access to advanced infrastructure to train their own models at the same time as exporting American models to the rest of the world. Now, at the time of recording, this has only been out for an hour or two, and so people are just wrapping their heads around it. Mohammed Soleiman from the Middle East Institute writes, The core message of the White House's AI action plan is clear. Build AI infrastructure and build more of it. And to stay ahead, the U.S. must export its full AI stack, ensuring global systems are anchored on American infrastructure. Georgetown professor Ryan Fedesuk, apologies Ryan for probably butchering your name, writes, After years spent watching D.C. fumble tech policy, this document is different. It reads like it was written by people who understand both the technology and the stakes. Ryan continues, The framing gets straight to the point. The United States is in a race to achieve global dominance in AI. Whoever has the largest AI ecosystem will set global AI standards and reap broad economic and military benefits. No more competing while we cooperate. Now, interestingly, on China, as much as they are a centerpiece of this, Ryan argues that there is a sensible through line, quote, taking competition seriously without veering into hysteria export USAI to allies before they turn to Beijing, plugging loopholes in semiconductor export controls, and countering CCP influence in international standards bodies. Ultimately, Ryan says that this feels to him grounded in reality. Like I said at the top, this report is only hours old at this point, at least for me, and so there will be a lot more to dig into soon. What's clear, though, this is a White House that sees AI as geostrategically important, something worth investing in, and something with massive implications for the shape of the future. Lots more to come, but for now, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching, as always, and until next time, peace.